On the Life of St. Martin by Sulpicius Severus Preface to Desiderius Severus, to his dearest brother Desiderius, sendeth greeting. I had determined, my like-minded brother, to keep private and confine within the walls of my own house the little treatise which I had written concerning the life of St. Martin. I did so, as I am not gifted with much talent and shrank from the criticisms of the world, lest, as I think will be the case, my somewhat unpolished style should displease my readers, and I should be deemed highly worthy of general reprehension for having too boldly laid hold of a subject which ought to have been reserved for truly eloquent writers. But I have not been able to refuse your request again and again presented. For what could there be which I would not grant in deference to your love, even at the expense of my own modesty? However, I have submitted the work to you on the sure understanding that you will reveal it to no other, having received your promise to that effect. Nevertheless, I have my fears that you will become the means of its publication to the world, and I well know that once issued it can never be recalled. If this shall happen, and you come to know that it is read by some others, you will, I trust, kindly ask the readers to attend to the facts related, rather than the language in which they are set forth. You will beg them not to be offended if the style chances unpleasantly to affect their ears, because the kingdom of God consists not of eloquence but faith. Let them also bear in mind that salvation was preached to the world not by orators but by fishermen, though God certainly could have adopted the other course if, if had it been advantageous. For my part, indeed, when I first applied my mind to writing what follows, because I thought it disgraceful that the excellences of so great a man should remain concealed, I resolved with myself not to feel ashamed on account of solecisms of language. This I did because I had never attained to any great knowledge of such things, or if I had formerly some taste of studies of the kind, I had lost the whole of that through having neglected these matters for so long a course of time. But, after all, that I may not have in future to adopt such an irksome mode of self-defense, the best way will be that the book should be published, if you think right, with the author's name suppressed. In order that this may be done, kindly erase the title which the book bears on its front, so that the page may be silent. And, what is quite enough, let the book proclaim its subject matter while it tells nothing of the author. Chapter 1. Reasons for Writing the Life of St. Martin Most men, being vainly devoted to a, the pursuit of worldly glory, have, as they imagined, acquired a memorial of their own names from this source, viz., devoting their pens to the embellishment of the lives of famous men. This course, although it did not secure for them a lasting reputation, still has undoubtedly brought them some fulfillment of the hope they cherished. It has done so both by preserving their own memory, though to no purpose, and because, through their having presented to the world the examples of great men, no small emulation has been excited in the bosoms of their readers. Yet notwithstanding these things, their labors have in no degree borne upon the blessed and never-ending life to which we look forward. For what has a glory destined to perish with the world profited those men themselves who have written on mere secular matters? Or what benefit has posterity derived from reading of Hector as a warrior, or Socrates as an expounder of philosophy? There can be no profit in such things, since it is not only folly to imitate the persons referred to, but absolute madness not to assail them with the utmost severity. For in truth, those persons who estimate human life only by present actions have consigned their hopes to fables and their souls to the tomb. In fact, they gave themselves up to be perpetuated simply in the memory of mortals, 
whereas it is the duty of man rather to seek after eternal life than an eternal memorial, and that not by writing or fighting or philosophizing, but by living a pious, holy, and religious life. This erroneous conduct of mankind, being enshrined in literature, has prevailed to such an extent that it has found many who have been emulous either of the vain philosophy or the foolish excellence which has been celebrated. For this reason I think I will accomplish something well worth the necessary pains if I write the life of a most holy man which shall serve in future as an example to others, by which indeed the readers shall be roused to the pursuit of true knowledge and heavenly warfare and divine virtue. In so doing, we have regard also to our own advantage, so that we may look for not a vain remembrance among men, but an eternal reward from God. For although we ourselves have not lived in such a manner that we can serve for an example to others, nevertheless we have made it our endeavor that he should not remain unknown who was a man worthy of imitation. I shall therefore set about writing the life of St. Martin, and shall narrate both what he did previous to his episcopate, and what he performed as a bishop. At the same time, I cannot hope to set forth all that he was or did. Those excellences of which he alone was conscious are completely unknown, because, as he did not seek for honor from men, he desired, as much as he could accomplish it, that his virtues should be concealed. And even of those which had become known to us, we have omitted a great number, because we have judged it enough, if only the more striking and eminent should be recorded. At the same time, I had it in the interests of readers to see to it that no undue amount of instances being set before them should make them weary of the subject. But I implore those who are to read what follows to give full faith to the things narrated, and to believe that I have written nothing of which I had not certain knowledge and evidence. I should, in fact, have preferred to be silent rather than to narrate things which are false. End of chapter 1